one second here. Okay, so this is a case study about a fourth grader in my grammar and writing class. This is Jay. And uh, I'll be speaking about his background, his learning skills, and his attitude in regards to academics and preparedness, and then his behavior. So about his background information, he attended an international school in India for three years, since first grade at age seven, and moved to Korea, or moved back to Korea at age 10. Uh, his, his grammar and comprehension and speaking is superb, but his productive skills are his weakness, such as writing and creativity, which in comparison to the class, it's, um, I mean, to like the hundred kids that I was teaching at this grade, uh, it wasn't a problem for anyone else. Like he really stood out in that, in that way. Now getting into his academics. Now, as you see here on the right side, like that's not his handwriting. This is just an example slide of um, when I'm teaching vocabulary. And um, they have weekly tests to do. So I would use the PowerPoint presentation. And they, as you can see here, um, it shows the right way how to use the, um, the language and the wrong form as well at the bottom. And at the end, the students are able to uh, write their own sentence. So they, wrote the, they write those in their notebook. But for Jaehoon, um, well, you know, for weaker students, they can copy this example sentence right here. You know, uh, they can just fill in the space and circle good or bad handwriting. So they can kind of have fun with that. But for Jay, it's a slow and difficult task for him to write. Um, the rest of the class gets frustrated with him. And, you know, they're saying to him to hurry and finish so he can move on to the next word, you know. So there's that. And uh, about writing, um, we were doing a writing assignment where they would write 10 sentences in the past tense about anything they wanted. Um, <clears throat> second. So they had, they had, they even had worksheets um, that they had worked on previously, which was collected over previous weeks. and. Uh, they could use that as a resource to help them with this test, like in terms of topics or using past tense verbs through assessments. Uh, for struggling students like Jay, I would, I would give him examples based on past topics that they're familiar with. You know, right here, suggestions to write a talk, you know, write, write about. And, uh, well, some, so here's some projects that we have done in class. You know, sometimes we did projects on those grammar topics, um, not necessarily writing topics, but those are grammar. However, uh, he would spend like all class not writing, you know, in terms of writing. And uh, because he's telling me he's thinking, you know, so maybe he's, you know, maybe he's thinking because he told me that. And uh, so, um, well, Sorry, let me back up for a minute. Results. Okay, so, uh, so given two class days, uh, he he would write only like four sentences, and they weren't all passing criteria either. Um, this was puzzling because he previously earned eighty percent score during a grammar assessment on past tense, so he knows past tense. When it comes to writing, you know, using the past tense, that that becomes the issue. Uh, maybe his weakness is spelling, but he never asked for how to spell something. And anytime I asked him for, you know, if, if he needed needed my help for topics or spelling or anything, he would refuse my help. And in class, he, he you know, he wouldn't talk to anyone either. But he's a social butterfly, like outside of class. And uh, in you know, in regards to grammar, you know, later on when we did um, a different grammar assessment on plurals, for instance. He started off slow. This is his testing attitude, you know. He starts off real slow, and then he just finishes at the end, and he gets a ninety percent. So he gets it. But as much as I walk around him and try to signal him to finish, uh, he just takes that long. All right, so let's move on. 
All right, let's let, let's talk about his um, skills and attitude towards preparedness. Okay, so um, teaching him how to be prepared in class. Uh, one of the lessons Jay struggles with is uh, being prepared for class, and um, I mean being prepared when class starts, and in uh, learning the expectations expectations of the class. Since the first day I had him in class, I had reminded him on a daily basis that he has to be in class before the bell rings or else I minus point on the dojo system. And like most students, they don't value dojo points until like after a semester when we use it as currency to win prizes to give value to what these points mean. And he's no exception. So, uh, but And the dojo points have very little motivational influence on him even during the second semester. Okay, so it's kind of harder to reach him in terms of that kind of uh, approach. Uh, he, I mean, he and his personality doesn't quite fit in with the rest of the students in the student culture of the fourth grade population because everyone has been grow, uh, grew up Korean. This Korean kid, he kind of was raised in India, but very Western kind of feel. You know, in terms of culture, upbringing. Okay, um, so during the duration of the semester, it had became a regular challenge for him to follow routines. But as you can see here, as I quoted here, uh, he would never show. He never shows remorse or a, des a desire to improve. Just acknowledgement and acceptance. So he's just like, oh, okay, oh, oh, okay, yeah. Like he knows, <laughs> he knows. You know, but he's never like says sorry or like show like. Oh, I did I did a bad thing, or I, I you know came to a realization. Never something like that, which is a unique, interesting concept uh, to observe from him. Um, I mean, this includes the beginning of the class. Okay, students come in, read the board on you know that list what materials we need, and it's normal for for students to go back to their Korean home class. They have a Korean home class where they have cubbies and all their jackets and books and notebooks and pencils and everything are. They go back there and get it, bring it back, before the bell rings. I mean, that's that's the expectation, and the routines, and it's been a regular challenge for him to be seated in class before the bell rings. I mean, he rolls in late, and he he would have absolutely no materials. This is a, this is a reoccurrence with the other subject teachers as well, you know, the reading teacher, the science teacher. When he rolls in like that. Um, I would remind him to ask. I would remind him by asking him, or the class, like, what materials do we need? And then he'd look at the board, and he'd be like, "Oh yeah, okay," and he just jets off to his classroom. But sometimes he'd be missing for five minutes. I remember walking um, towards his homeroom class because he's been missing, and I would see him teaching and uh, talking to his teacher. And what's a uh, what's even more regular is that he would take several t trips to get his materials from the homeroom class. And I'd have him verbalize to me what materials he needs. So say pencil, glue, and notebook, okay? And however, he, re he would return with only a pen. And I would remind him that we don't write with a pen because the board doesn't say pen. And to bring a pencil, right? So then he'd just jet off and then he'd return with only a pencil. <laughs> and I'd ask, If, if that's all he needs to bring, right? And he'd have another aha moment and say like, oh yeah, I need glue and notebook. And he jets off again. And then he would return with only glue and pencil. And okay, you can just imagine how this ends. Um, he eventually gets everything, but I do remind him every day, like this is what you should be doing 10 minutes, I mean during your 10 minutes break before class begins. So let's talk about his behavior. Um, For Jay, it's either high energy, talking out of turn, or shuts down and ignores. When I nominated, when I nominate uh, particular students to answer questions, uh, either because they're students who need more attention or they're off task, um, Jay would just shout out the answer because he's an expert in speaking and comprehension and full of wild ideas. 
um, he often talks about. I mean, he, talk, he often talks out of turn too, um, because he's just restless about raising his hand. But he understands that he has to uh, wait his turn, and he can't just blurt out answers. He understands, but the problem is um, that if I don't call on him for a while, what does he do? Uh, he gets bored. Um, but I have to do that because even though he's an expert in everything, like the content must meet the challenge among the average of the class. And uh, so he just turns away from the teacher right here, and just bends over and just leans on his chest and I have to squat down to him like, hey, you all right? You know, like, and he, then if you give him attention, then he'll kind of come back. I mean, he's not like sad or anything. He's just kind of like escaping, but you know. Okay, let's move on to how he triggers teachers. He loves triggering teachers. I think this is an uh, interesting motive of his, uh, possibly. Um, I think he knows how to follow routines, but it's more fun to trigger teachers. Even, even in discussions, you know, in class, we'll talk about whatever, and I'm getting feedback from the students, right? Like some ideas. And uh, he would say, like, in a, a, something inappropriate, like an appropriate answer. Like, you would not dream of hearing from a fourth grader like you do not talk about this at all and it doesn't matter if you're like in high school you, you know those kind of topics and uh, uh, and so when I don't react to it like oh my god da, 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 you know I don't react to it I just kind of take it as a suggestion and I'll be like okay let's roll with it okay so using this example <laughs> and uh, then he would be like whoa teacher no wait and I'm like what he's like no I'm like, it's your idea. I mean, so, you know, what? It's That's what it is. And then he would come back with, like, a better response that's more appropriate. So I'm like, cool, thank you. That That is actually much more uh, appropriate and everything. You know, beneficial for the whole, whole class. Thank you, Jay. You know? <laughs> but um, it doesn't mitigate his attempts, e even though when I take this approach, right? Uh, because especially with the other teachers who challenge him, like, in other ways... Like, yeah, you know, it's triggering just everyone, you know. Um, it's a constant complaint I hear from the reading teacher, for sure. All right, so um, on the topic of behaviors, here's another instance. Uh, we have tubular iron bars that run horizontally, as you can see here by the window, right? And um, he, he would climb over it, stick his whole, like, half his body out the window, right? And I would have to stop him from doing that in my class. And I have. I got him to stop. You know, but I do remember this whole week, like, uh, you would hear the same complaint from the other teachers, just blowing their mind, you know, and, uh, yeah, they had such a difficult time with them. So here are some other, um, here are some other ways that we try resolving the issue. Um, we tell his Korean homeroom teacher about the issues, no doubt. Uh, Jay causes problems even in his classroom, <laughs> in his homeroom teacher. Like, the homeroom teacher calls his parents, but that doesn't resolve anything. We, you know, the only slight difference we see is maybe, like, a hesitation before he acts. Um, okay, I guess that's a step forward, right? But, you know, his parents do support him and help him with his homework. And, uh, you know, I've also, I've also, I've also seen him um, at lunchtime where he's required constant monitoring because he's always sitting next to the homeroom teacher. So yeah, yeah, I've seen him forced to sit with his homeroom teacher every day in the cafeteria during lunchtime. Um, so yes, let's recap. Hey Jay, welcome back. So this is for you to read if you'd like. I'm open for discussions, suggestions, and thank you. Like you, did you have him that first year after he had moved? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. He had just moved from India. I mean, my, like my first thought, just like hearing the way that you describe him, like obviously I'm trying to like think about, you know, what maybe some of the issues that he could have could be. Um, and like my initial thought is like, that's a quite a big adjustment um, for kids um you know to move countries um 
so like I'm sure that that probably contributes a bit to some of the behaviors um Well, I mean, he was very Western. Like, he he knows what he's doing. He's a real confident kid. Mm-hmm. Like, he had no problem fitting so maybe in. in part, like, maybe it was a bit of a culture shock for him. Not at um, all. I mean, not, I, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe, like, because he's, he's, I don't know, not used to it. I'm not really sure. I see what I don't know why they left India, or maybe he left behind somebody really important to him, or, yeah. Like maybe I'm just I'm just trying to think of like what could be like the source of some of these behaviors, Um, because that's like would be my initial thought before giving like suggestions because that will help me think of how to suggest to you. Um, Also, like it sounds to me, he reminds me a lot of one of my students um, that I worked with. Like I gave lessons to outside of school and worked with him as well in school. Um, was very smart. Um, he had an ADD diagnosis. Um, so for him, it was similar in terms of like behaviors, like, you know, with the materials. Oh, you need this, this, and this. I know Mario really well. So he knew he needed those three materials, but it would be the same thing, you know, like 10, 10 trips to get the three materials. Um, talking with, you know, every person he saw in the hallway along the way. Um, and one of the things that helped me a lot with him was giving him a lot of like tasks, giving him responsibilities. Um, and in part, like why I was able to do that, this is not finishing tasks, but like helping with the materials, um, in part, like by giving him the responsibility to be in charge of, I don't know, you're the delivery person for whatever this is, or you're in charge of like X thing at the beginning of class. Um, it was able to give him something to focus on besides what he had to get ready. So he would get everything prepared and ready really quickly. Um, so then he could do move on to that next task that he liked and he felt like he had a responsibility for. Um, I mean, obviously it's different, but you know, I see some things in, yeah. in your description of Jay. That okay. remind me a bit of Mario, my, my student. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, ADD is, is it's a possibility. Um, it, but, or maybe he's just bored as well, which is probably contributes to, I mean, ADD contributed to his boredom or something. <laughs> yeah. um, Can I ask you a question, Vernon? Um, One of the things I was wondering is if all of the behavior issues were sort of smoke and mirror distractions from um, something else and what that something else is, is the question. But um, I I guess I was wondering, um, well, one, two questions. One is um, how did he do in math? Um, And then the second question was, did you feel like there the um the writing was part of his smoke and mirrors like i'm just, and his messing with teachers kind of behavior like he could write if he wanted to or did you feel like there was actually sort of um a learning issue going on where he didn't he was having problems you know getting from here down you know to the page and if so because he's such a confident kid and whatever maybe that's what the smoke and mirrors is about is just you know and why he takes forever to get the pencil and the eraser and the whatever because he just doesn't want to do the right he's avoiding doing it because it's embarrassing he doesn't know how he feels bad about not being able to do it so those are some of the things i was wondering about interesting yeah the notebook and pencil cases pencil are elements of writing (laughs) and <laughs> he does not like writing <laughs> so he is probably avoiding to write um okay sorry i'm trying to remember the question here um well i know it was kind of all over yeah it was basically okay i'm sorry it, does it seem like he has an issue with the writing is, is that maybe what he's trying to avoid with all of this other shenanigans it does seem like that he didn't do much writing in his last school. Maybe. Or maybe he just doesn't like it. I'm not really sure. I 
always wonder when kids don't like something, what that's really about. You know, is that really just like a preference? Like I don't like uh, strawberry (laughs) or is it, I don't like it because I can't do it and I need help with like some like intensive. That's what I'm wondering if he needs like a writing intensive. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. To help figure out what exactly the problem is with the writing. Perhaps, I believe so. (laughs) A writing intensive, yeah. I think that would help a lot Um, because as um as he's good at speaking english when he writes it he can't really differentiate past tense and present tense you know it's just something that he's able to speak but not mm-hmm. actually analyze on paper it could be just a learning um learning strength and weakness sort of thing you know like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um what was the first question you asked it was a uh, I was just curious about math. We haven't oh, yeah, heard math, about right. math. Yeah, I don't know. Um, mm. I, I, I've never actually seen... I don't even know if they teach math over there. Interesting. Okay, I don't know. Mm. Prob- oh, yeah, they do teach... Oh, yeah, they, yeah there's math. Okay. Mm. That is something I have I never think. thought of. Interesting. Considering the math. What, what about math, though? Well, why, is it because he's counting the things that he needs to bring? Uh, no, I guess I was just, I mean, it, that may or may not be pertinent at all. I mean, somebody could have um, some sort of a learning disability or or maybe it's not even a learning disability. Maybe for whatever reason, he just isn't, you know, just not getting the writing, but, uh, but be doing great in math. It was just kind of more of a curiosity about that. But I, I don't know, my... Yeah, my thought is really just to focus on helping him get like some just-in-time writing skills, like working with a specialist or something like that to really help understand exactly what's going on for him and neurologically or in his brain with mm-hmm. the writing. And I wonder if some of that, uh, some of the other behavioral stuff would maybe dissipate a little bit if he had that confidence in that area. Yeah, in these cases, I think in a, a counselor would have been appropriate. And I wish that there was an, uh, there was a counselor or a school counselor, but there wasn't. It's all in discretion what about, of the teacher. Out of who, curiosity, what about like in terms of obviously he turned in some of his writing, um, and you said like he did. Did he have any issues like turning in assignments with homework? Because I know you mentioned like the parents seemed to help him with homework. Like, so I'm guessing like he turned in his homework. Did he ever have like a writing assignment that he did at home for homework that like was complete and just didn't feel like it belonged to him compared to the way he respond to writing in class? Interesting question. I, yes, I, for example, like I've also had a situations with students that seem to be struggling with writing and all of a sudden, you know, in class it's like this big to do but then you know there's a writing assignment they can do at home and you know the writing assignment is great and i legitimately had one student where i had to bring her parents in because it was just so the skill differentiation like there was just no way that she was writing it like or if she was i was so floored as to how it was possible for her to produce that work at home and then at school, not even, you know, not even be able to write at all, basically. Um, right. Just out of curiosity. Like, that also could be a factor, too. I don't know. Like, yeah. if you saw a difference, if he were to be working at home or... You know, maybe it's the content that the content that we're writing about. Because when I have them write things, they are... this It's being personalized. You know, they're using uh, their interest or their experiences in past... Uh, you know, in the past experiences, using the past tense grammar, right? And in, when it when he's doing homework, it's by the the, the Korean teachers give him homework. It's not we don't give them homework, right? Okay. When, te- when so when Korean teachers give homework or a con- instruct lesson, it has there is no creativity. It's just rote, you know. So if he's learning writing over there, his homework would be Korean handwriting, Korean writing. Uh, but the question still remains is how is he doing in the writing aspects right yeah does he like writing i mean even though it's like different just out of curiosity like his writing homework that he would get for like you know korean writing what does he do well in that like what does that look like um okay 
Yeah, just out of curiosity. And I mean, with that information, okay, let's say that he um, he does fine. He does fine with with his homework and writing writing Korean, and he finishes assignments with his, his parents. Then what? It, it kind of narrows down to maybe his English ability, just for writing, I guess. What about like, for example, if you were to give him the written prompt, you know, 10 sentences about your past experiences, Done. how forthcoming is he when speaking uh -huh. about that kind of stuff? Because that also is another question. Like, is he a creative speaker? Does he invent stories, but it's verbal? Yes. So I don't think creativity is the issue. I think it is putting that to paper for him.